Here in Peru, the Cordillera Blanca is a place where you can see global climate change happening. This is where the eternal ice is melting. The people here face the risks of global warming every day. Ambos glaciares forman the two glaciers up there are blocks of ice that hang over the lake like big mushrooms. Any day now, they could fall down in an avalanche. But nobody knows when this will happen. There's always the risk that a huge flood wave will rush down into our valley. It would be a disaster. Adelie, Saul Luciano's little daughter, still doesn't understand the dangers of global warming in the mountains. The grown-ups in the family are aware of it, but moving away is out of the question. For generations, the locals have lived on the slopes and in the valleys of the Andean mountains, growing vegetables, potatoes and fruit. But how are they supposed to protect themselves and their houses? These poor farmers, who have hardly made any contribution to climate change, a few temporary pipes are supposed to pump out the water, but that isn't enough. Scientists predict a flood wave as high as 30 meters that would turn this little brook into a tsunami. Who's helping these people? We are now getting help. We were put in touch with German Watch. And thanks to this support, we hope to build a wall or a dam to protect us from the water. On the way to Huraras in the Peruvian highlands is a delegation from German Watch. Klaus Milke and his companions have been involved in the climate debate for over 20 years. Their biggest concern is protecting the most vulnerable people, like Saul Luciano. The contact was set up by Peruvian climate activists, and together they now want to hold accountable the big energy corporations. These are responsible for climate change and glacial melting by releasing massive amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. They first meet at the Luciano family home. Klaus Milke has a lot he wants to learn. We would like to find out more about your situation, he says. And then Milke explains the proposal to sue the German energy corporation RWE for the damages it causes. Saul wants to make RWE pay part of the costs for measures to prevent flooding at the glacial lake and to protect the people who face danger. He wants RWE to pay in accordance with their emissions. If he is successful, people who face similar dangers at other locations could also sue. It would be a precedent that could pressure politicians to find global solutions. How many people? So how many people live around here? Klaus Milke wants to know. Around 500? No, 5,000. Oh, that is a lot of people. Suddenly, Milke understands what a flood would mean. Saul says there are very many houses on the way up to the glacier. Hundreds of families would be hit. And the local advisor, José Valdivia Roca, says that nobody, no family and no house has any protection against a flood wave. Water would crash down from all sides. The next morning, Klaus Mürke begins the trek up to Lake Palkakocha. He wants to take a closer look at the damage to the glacier. The big companies in the industrialized countries are primarily responsible for global warming. This is why the glaciers are melting here. That's why we demand that they install flood protection measures at our glacial lake. And even better, that they should stop contaminating the climate in the future so that all people can survive. The track goes up to almost 5,000 meters. Breathing becomes difficult. 
Every step is painful. And then we finally see the glacial lake. It is clear that the ice is melting and a sudden flood could come at any time. The only protection is provided by a few plastic pipes. That is too little to really help. Three old men stand watch over the glacier, but they don't even have a functioning satellite telephone. How can they warn the people in the valley if a flood comes rushing down? Something has to happen here and fast. I hope that together with German Watch and our lawsuit, we will be successful. Because this is not just a regional problem for us. If we are successful, it could make a change, even on a global level. If we don't speak out now, if we don't raise our voice, then we will die.